Fabric can be a lovely addition to your project, but it's not always easy to work with, is it? Well, if you're looking for some ideas for ways to use fabric in your next project, myself and Jerry van der Velden from Jerry's Craft Room have some inspiration for you. And if you're new here, then welcome to my channel. I'm Kim Dello, and I share tips and tricks and tutorials to cover your mixed media art needs. So do subscribe and join me for your weekly art videos to help you get creating more. And also don't forget to watch Jerry's video too and subscribe to her as well for lots of wonderful art and craft videos. And I'll leave a link to her channel in the description. Now when Jerry asked me to collaborate with her for a video and well we put our heads together and we thought that maybe we'd challenge each other to use fabric in our projects. And it actually came at a really good time for me because I was making a fabric based cover with my Digi Delightfuls and Video Fanatics over on Patreon for part of a DIY bookmaking series that I was doing this month. And well, I needed to decorate it, so I decided to combine these two projects. So here is the process with lots of tips and tricks along the way to help you to decorate your own fabric project. So you'll find the products that I'm using in the description as always, but the fabric that I'm using is actually a repurposed denim that I've just cut up from an old pair of jeans. And I really love including denim in my mixed media projects from time to time. And if you've been here a while, then you've probably seen a few of these projects on my channel or on my blog. They do crop up. <laughs> And I do all sorts of things with them from like cards and to wall hangings to this kind of thing that we're going to do today because it's just such a lovely surface to work on. I mean, it's not that far off using canvas, is it really? I mean, it's got the same sort of feel to it, same sort of weave, but then you've also got that wonderful color too. And denim comes in all sorts of great colors. And I particularly like working on the darker denims. So yeah, I am a bit of an old denim fanatic when it comes to my mixed media projects. So for this cover, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with it, how I was going to decorate it. So I started with some random paint color and bits of notebook collage that I'm putting on with matte medium. And that was really just to get me launched into it because if you've been watching my videos for a while, then you'll know that whenever I'm in doubt, I just add some color or some texture or both. And it's just the best way of launching yourself into a project and just getting going and, you know, breaking that sort of like clean canvas feel. Now I'd know that I don't want to completely cover my denim because I do want some of that colour to peek through at the end because it makes just such a lovely contrast with the bright paint colours that I'm using. So I just keep on adding different colour layers, adding paint with my palette knife. Now I, I don't really want to blend the colours at this point, well in fact I don't want to blend the colours at all for this. And if you get in that situation where you kind of want to keep adding these colour layers but you don't want to blend your colours, there's a few things you can do. Obviously you can let each layer just dry before you add a new layer, but you can also sort of put the paint on thinly and then work over the top of the thinner areas first so that you can let thicker areas dry and just sort of work a little bit more carefully. You'll also find me sort of dotting around, filling in some spaces where there are no paint areas. So that helps as well. And a surface like this denim that I've not treated with a ground like gesso, for example, well, it's going to absorb the paint a little and that also helps decrease that colour mixing on the thinner layers as well because the fibres are kind of grabbing onto the paint whereas if I'd put a ground on there it might have been a bit more movable depending on what kind of ground you use. And of course you can do a combination of things as well so in some layers I just let the layer underneath dry first and then worked and then in other ones I got a little bit too impatient and just very carefully added my next paint to it so that I wouldn't get that mixing of colours. Sometimes you want to mix on the canvas and sometimes you don't and this was one of those times that I didn't want to. Then I got to a point after sort of putting on all this colour that I started to branch out a little bit and rather than just adding colour in those random splodges of coverage I started to focus the marks a little bit more and this is a great way to start adding texture and interest to your project. And I even started adding the paint a little thicker and scribbling physical texture directly into it with my palette knife. And you can easily do this with a palette knife or some other tool that you might have or even the end of a pencil. So I keep on building and swapping between splodges of colour and yep, that is a mixed media technical term, <laughs> right? 
and then more focused mark making too but with big sweeping patterns of marks rather than little marks and I've been doing a lot of, of little mark making and yeah it's branching out and doing something a little bit more sweeping is great fun to do but that's just really how this project felt like going really and if you wanted to you could easily use the little mark making and if you need some more inspiration for how to do that I have got lots of mark making and doodle ideas on my channel so I'll link up some videos for you in the description and the cards so you can bookmark those to watch later once you've watched this video and Jerry's video of course so up until now I haven't been planning and all of the layers have been pretty organic but I knew that I wanted my next layer to be red and I wanted the red to be really bright and you know really strong and the only red that I currently own in this set of paints uh, it happens to be a semi-transparent and I wanted that red to really pop so I used the old trick of adding white first block out the background and then add in the red over the top and do this when that white is dry to get a really effective colour pop and I could probably have dug out some more opaque red from my stash but to be honest it didn't occur to me to hunt one down until just now when I was doing this voiceover yeah I know right <laughs> but it does give me the opportunity to share this tip for how to extend your translucence and your semi-translucent paints and use them as opaques if you need to uh, just in case you missed that tip and you haven't come across it before so a bit more colour splodging, remember it is a technical term <laughs> and I think it's time to work on the inside of the cover now so I actually wanted to give the outside cover some breathing space because I had expected it to go in a different direction something that there was a bit more mark making intense but when I added that red things changed up for me and I felt it was actually almost there so this is a good place for another tip and that is that if you feel that you might be near to the end of a piece but you're not 100% committed to it, you're not sure, maybe it's taking you by surprise like this one has, then give it a bit of a rest. Go and work on something else and then come back to it. Don't give it too much of a rest but yeah, go and do something else for a few minutes and then come back and see how you feel about it then. Obviously you don't have to always, sometimes you are 100% sure and you can just sort of keep on going and yeah, do, just keep on going. But for me, I think it definitely helped to give the outside cover a rest whilst I covered the inside with some light blue and I'd actually mixed up a way more light blue than I actually needed. So <laughs> it just, it all worked out. So I put it on the inside. Now the inside is mostly cardboard with a little bit of the denim sort of poking out over the edges so I covered the whole area, all of it, so fabric as well and this is another useful trick to help you to seal in your frayed edges on a project so if you like the texture of frayed fabric and you, and you want it on your project but you don't want to risk it continuing to fray then acrylic paint is just such a great glue and it's going to stop anything from fraying further so just cover the area and this works really well for me on my inside cover so I can cover all that frayed edges and even stuff that I might have missed on the outside well that's not going to fray either because the inside is now covered in paint but let's say you have a frayed area that you don't want to add colour to then reach for a gel medium that dries transparent and that's going to seal in your frayed edges too once the inside cover was dry then I went ahead and started adding doodles to it with a paint pen and the, the blue painted area it just needed something extra but I didn't want to sort of layer it up and layer it up and layer it up to add details so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to just do some fun little doodles here and just add a little bit of patterning and a bit of shape so that that blue area didn't look quite as blank as, as it did at the start so back to the fabric part and yeah that working on something else for a bit really definitely helped me to come to a decision about this and using the black paint pen here as well just seemed like a, a natural progression and thing to do so initially I was thinking that the red shapes would just be another layer in the mix and that I would continue to work over the top of them and add more marks and get a little bit more detailed with smaller marks 
So when I added them and those blue splodges and then started to feel that actually this was pretty much done, yeah, it was a bit of a surprise for me. But making the red shapes the final feature and using that black pen to bring them out a little bit more, it really worked for me and I like that this piece is all layers of colour, really. So remember, sometimes your pieces can be really simple and the visual interest can come more from the way you lay your colours than the way you add in fine details. And that can be a fun and freeing way to work. So some paint splatters added a little bit more interest here and I used a few different pens to give me those splatters and I love how this bright paint works over that denim and, and how the denim itself gives the piece a physical and visual texture too and it really adds to the whole thing with the frayed edge, the lovely colour of the denim and how it contrasts with the paint. I mean this is the kind of book that you're going to want to get messy in, isn't it? And that's the best kind. <laughs> so here's Jerry's video to watch next and I can't wait to see what she's done with her fabric and how she's used it in her project. So go watch that and then don't forget to watch my other videos here for some more mixed media inspiration and just have lots of fun creating.